Hey, Mac, check it out. This is supposed to be the hottest hot pepper in the entire world. I dare you to eat it. It's the hottest pepper in the whole world. Yeah, right. Whoa. Are you okay? Oh, we're going to them. Let's go get another one. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by Southern Indiana Pediatrics, part of IU Health Southern Indiana Physicians. For decades, parents in our community have trusted their children's care to Southern Indiana Pediatrics. Learn more at siphysicians.org. WFYI Indianapolis and these Indiana Public Television stations. The Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members, thank you. Welcome to the Friday Zone, everybody. I'm Luke. And I'm Maddie. This week's show is going to sizzle, Luke. <laughs> yep, things are heating up Ooh. in the zone. So let's blast things off with a song off the Friday Zone playlist. I'm your Friday Zone. Today. So I have my sunglasses on. 
Yeah, you know, you should also be wearing sunscreen today. What? <laughs> oh, sunscreen? Why? Well, the sun emits rays that are dangerous to our skin, so uh -huh. it's important to wear sunscreen to protect our skin so we don't uh -huh. get burnt. Oh, so that you don't turn red. Right. <laughs> okay, and, and then when should we put on sunscreen? Any day that you're going to be outside in the sun, you should put it on. Okay. And you might have to put it on more than once that day because sunscreen doesn't last the whole entire day. So oh, probably how about, long does it last? Probably about an hour-ish. Oh, so every hour you have to put more sunscreen on. Yep. And do you put it on just when you go swimming or when you play sports or when? Just all the time when you're in the sun. Okay. It doesn't matter. Even when you're not swimming, you can get burnt. Oh. I don't need sunscreen because I'm a puppet, but you need sunscreen, and that is important, right? Right. Right. Thank you, girls. Members of the Perry Clear Creek Fire Department here with us in the zone. Oh. And we'll talk to them about what it's like to be in a real fire right after this Friday's own field Whoop. trip. Look at that. Hey everybody, I'm Audrey and I'm here with Captain Denny. So where are we? What's going on here? What do you do? We're at the Fort Wayne Firefighters Museum. Um, I've been a firefighter here in Fort Wayne for 24 years and I give tours and teach fire safety here at the museum. So let's go on inside. Sweet! It's the loudest thing. It's really cool. All right, Denny, we're now in the alarm room, right? Right. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, we've got a lot of alarm, old alarm equipment that was used in the early 1900s, late 1800s, and into the 1900s. Every street corner had a, a firebox like this. If you had an emergency, you ran to that box, opened it up, pulled that. When that started ticking, in the station, there was a, a gong like what's on the wall up there, and it would ring the box number that was on the box. It would ring up for this box one time, three times, two times. Uh -huh. And then the fireman would know that box 132 was pulled. What they would then do is go over to their desk, look for the card that had that number on it, which told them what street corner it was on. Like a GPS kind of. Kind of like. <laughs> and it would be instantaneous. As soon as you pulled that, it rang in the station. This is a, an old fire truck. It's a 1848 hand pumper that was used by the volunteers in town here. This fire truck was pushed to the fire by the firemen. Um, once they got to the fire, then they had to hand pump it to get the water to go through it. Wow. Hand pump it? They have 10 on each side to pump it, plus the guys on the hose line to fight the fire. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it was. When they would come back from a fire, the hose would be wet, um, and they couldn't put it back on the truck, so they would hang it in this room and let it dry for a couple of days, then bring it down, roll it up, and put it on the rack that's in the other side of the room. And how long are these hoses? Those are 100-foot sections. Now, Denny, what is this? This looks like it came from a space movie. Tell me what this is. This is fire gear, but it's called proximity suit, and this is what they use at airports and the Air Force use. Oh. Um, when they have plane crashes, they could get pretty much into the fire with these things, not for very long, but a lot longer than we can with our regular gear. This next one is rubber gear. This was used kind of in the, in the 1960s. Um, it just basically was raincoat, and there was rain pants with it too. Um, a smaller helmet. The next one is a little newer. In the 70s, they got different kind of material in the coats. Um, it was more of a um, fire resistant material. Uh, they had the longer coats because the boots went all the way up. Wow. We like, Why do they need such big boots if you guys are fighting fires? We've got fire hoses and we've got water. We're spraying oh. water so it keeps us dry. Okay. Now, how about this guy? So, all of this is connected to like oxygen or something? There's, yeah, there's a tank on the back. Wow! This one's a little bit newer. This is kind of like what we wear today. It's, it's still um, fire resistant material, but it's a different kind of material. A um, little up, more updated air packs 
pass device on here, which is an old pass device. What this is, is if the fireman goes down and this is on, if the fireman doesn't move for 30 to 45 seconds, this will start making a real loud noise and gives the other firefighters an idea where they're at and they can come find them. And the whole thing weighs about 70 pounds. Wow, <laughs> that's as probably as much as some of you guys. Holy smokes, this is heavy. It's like carrying another person as well as saving a third person. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. You're safe in my arms. As I'm safe in my gear. All right, guys, I'm gonna go save some kittens and fight some fires. See you guys later. <laughs> Just kidding. I think I'll leave the firefighting to the professionals. If you guys wanna see more, come on down to the Fort Wayne Firefighters Museum and you'll learn a lot. Welcome back, everyone. We've got some friends here with us, and we've got Dustin and Craig from the Perry Clear Creek Fire Department. Thanks for joining us, guys. No problem. Thanks for having us. So, you guys lit a house on fire, I heard. Why did you do that? We do it for to practice, to cool. bring in newer firefighters into a house, and so they feel comfortable and it's a safer environment for them to be in. Cool. And so, we will go through a house. And oh, we got some footage up there. Wow. Yes, we do. Uh, We'll go through that house and we'll clean it up a little bit so it's up to IDEM codes. Mm -hmm. So any kind of bad materials out of the house. Okay. Where did you find the house to burn? Well, it's my old house. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you set your old house on fire. Yes. That must have been a pretty interesting experience. Well, it, it saved, uh, saved me from tearing it down and also gave the department some time to do some training right. with some younger guys. Good use of the house. Yes. This footage is so neat. So you guys are going in. Yep. That's our old living room. And you just <laughs> set it on fire. <laughs> your old yep. living room. Yep. Wow. That's pretty cool. Isn't this cool, guys? Yeah. Really, really cool. And they've got all this gear on, too. Wow. Look at so, that. whoa. So what are you guys doing right there? So you right. just lit it on fire on the outside, set it no, on fire. We lit it up, we light it up on the inside. Oh, okay, on the inside. And we'll do small fires. Mm -hmm. And then as we're going into the structure, because we're we're geared up to mm -hmm. go in. Uh, and that way the guys oh, are lighting protected. it right now. Okay. Exactly. We're getting ready to light it. Uh, oh my gosh, that's in the back of the house. Smoke. Wow. And what we want is the temperature to get a certain temperature in the house, and then we'll send the guys in, the newer guys, and they'll be in the front. Okay. The older guys are in the back, so if they have a problem, so we, back up. we have backup crews ready to great, go for them. Great. How many new guys do you usually have for these kind of things? Wow. It doesn't, well, at this point in time, we had a lot of different fire, fire departments there. We had uh, um, three different departments from around Monroe County okay. to go in the house and to learn. All one um, in the other. Yep. They're going in, they're getting on their knees right away. What is that? Well, it's just like when you're coming out of a structure, as a firefighter, when we're going into a structure, we want to be down on our hands and knees. Right. Because the smoke and the heat is, always goes up. Okay. And as it goes up, the only place you're going to be able to see is down low. Okay. So when you guys are coming out of your house, if mm -hmm. it was on fire, you want to be as close to the ground as possible. Okay. Where there's more oxygen and more visibility. Oh, that's interesting. So you guys are not wearing regular clothes in those videos. So what what kind of gear? We brought some today, which is pretty awesome, I think. What kind of gear do you have to wear? What are the most important features when you go into a house like well, when that? Well, when we go into a fire, we have to have certain gear on. Okay. This is what we call turnout gear. Uh, we have coats and pants. We have a hood. Uh, These coats are not any normal coats, I don't think. They've got a million no. layers. There's there's two different layers to them, and that's why it keeps us cooler inside. Because if we get to a certain temperature, we we got to we got to have coolness to it because right, right. we're in a hot environment anyways. But this is also made of certain fibers, so we're we won't catch on fire. Mm -hmm. wow. But we also have to have our hoods on and stuff. That way our ears don't burn. Okay. And so we're we're safe as we're going in to find if there's anybody in the house. Yeah. Right. Because in if someone has pets or whatever, that way we oh. can get to the inside the structure and look for out. everybody out. Do you want to try one of these hats on? I think these hats are pretty cool too. Yeah, I Do have you, one at home. You have one of these? Well, no. somehow I find a hard time believing that because it's pretty, pretty big for it's you. It's actually a plastic one. You yeah. look great in it. It's pretty That's, cool. So what are some cool features on here that we should know about? Well, oh. well, one. It's, he knows. It's so. really hard. Yeah. It's really hot. Like try, like no hard. Oh, it's really hard. Yeah. The helmet yeah. is okay. Like try breaking it. 
I don't want to try breaking it because I know I'm not going to be able to. So what yeah, are some yeah. important features on here that we should know about? Well, what we have here is with these helmets is it's got a hard outer coating. So if okay. we have drywall or anything falling down on us, it doesn't hurt our head. Right, right. We, inside we have, the newer helmets have a little bit more foam in it. Okay. This is an older style. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have hoods on it also to protect our ears and stuff. We have um, neck straps and stuff so the helmet stays on our head. Uh -huh. And if we're cutting with chainsaws and stuff, we, have, we also have a We've shield. That shield. Oh. So this is just stuff to protect us. If we have any hot temperature water or something coming down off us, it can come off the back of us. Okay. So. Wow. So we have some rescue video of you guys going in and rescuing some people in that situation where you guys mm -hmm. lit your house on fire. So what exactly, what, what do you suggest if you're, if you're caught in a situation like that to do? Well, if you're in your bedroom, mm -hmm. first thing to do, check your door because your door should be shut in your house, in your bedroom if you're waking up during the night. Right and so if you're going, go to your bedroom door, check the, check the door with your hand. Don't go to the doorknob, but check the wood part of the door with the back side of your hand. So he's going there right now. Okay. Yep. Um, this is a, a bedroom that we were in. But you're going to check that door. If the door is hot, you're going to go out your second way because we need two ways out of every bedroom in a house. Okay. And the second way would be your your bedroom window. Okay. If you're on the second story of a house, you can have ladders or something to get you out of that. You need to learn how to open your windows. If you can't open your window, you stay at your window and wait till a fire truck gets there and knock on your window when the firemen get there. That way we can get you out of that house. Okay. Uh, so you should always have two ways to get out of a room yep. before anything like this could ever happen. You exactly. just want to make sure you have that backup so you know what to do if you're we, in this situation. We should always practice at home. Okay. Everybody should practice at home. Always go through a, a training at home. You practice at home? Oh, well, there's one more way to, if you just have one level of your house, there's this one way to get you out of that one. Right. If you if you have a front door, get try to get out of that one. If you have a back door, you can get out of that one. Yeah. Right. That's two ways, like you said. Right, saying. that's yeah. two ways, so but that's very smart. the front door is the best way to go. If you have a fence at the back door, it's the worst way to go. Well, and the other thing we need to be careful of is when we get out, like if you're alone and you get out, make sure you go to a safety spot. And that could be like your mailbox mm -hmm. or a tree out in front of your house. That way the whole family can go to that location right. and we can count heads. You can meet there. Exactly. So let's say everyone gets out of the house, everyone's safe, hopefully, mm -hmm. which happened in that video. Yep. So what do you guys, how do you go about putting out the fire? Well, what we'll do is the first responding units will we'll respond to the fire. Mm -hmm. And with our newer trucks, we can actually get packed up in the truck so we can send crews off. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll, oh, take, we we'll take the hose out and get it ready and get it charged and then guys will start going into the structure. We'll get down low, and as we're as you were watching right here, they're crawling back to this back bedroom in this house. Okay. And we don't spray water until we get to that, the try to get spot. to that, that hot spot of that fire. How many people do you need on a hose? I mean, a hose seems pretty, it's, is it heavy? It, it, it can be very heavy. It just depends on also the pressure that you're putting through it and also the hot size of the hose. This is what we have for an attack line. It's, a, it's an inch and, inch and a half line that we run into a house. And it has about 100 to 100, or 90 pounds of pressure on it, depending. If you need more, we can turn it up to about 125. Wow. But then you're gonna have to have more people holding that hose. Right, so more people. But when we get to that seat of that fire where you've seen that fire going up, we wanna shoot that with water. And we wanna shoot it on the exact point. Now, if it's spread through the house, you got more points. But right. what you wanna do is get exactly on that seat of that fire, that way we can put it out. Okay. And, uh, oh wow, look at those flames, so much wow. smoke. At this point, we're letting the house go at this point. So, uh, what, so how hot do you think it was in there right now that at this can, point? From 1500 degrees or hotter. 1500 degrees, and your wow. coat and things can protect you from that amount of heat? No, No. Uh, the, the coats will protect you up to about 800 degrees, but okay. you cannot touch yourself. Okay. As, as a firefighter, your, your SCBA starts setting off alarms, you're gonna start feeling it yourself. And it's best to tell your your personnel that's in there with you. Is, okay, we got to get out of here. Something's okay. going to happen. If it's going to flash on you, which is it's, it gets to a certain temperature, it's time to get out. Because what will happen is all our gear will burn also. Oh wow! So it's it's dangerous and time to get out. But that's what you have to practice for, and that's why we want to do these kind of fires. That way, guys understand how they how how these fires work. Uh, they also have flashover chambers. 
certain departments that the city of Bloomington, uh, city of Bloomington has a flashover chamber okay. here in Bloomington where they can go into and practice this kind of stuff. Wow. But here we we had a house that we could burn, so we. That's a pretty great opportunity and a cool way to use your house for other people to learn. Yes. Very cool. Well, it was so great learning about all this. I think this is all really important stuff to know, you guys. Remember, two spaces for each room, right? Yeah. You always have to know that so then if a fire comes, you'll know what to do. But thank you guys so much for joining us today. Do you guys have any other last minute questions or do you, I think you need to try on this hat again. Who else wants to try on this hat? Me. You, oh, do you, you all want to try on the hat? Okay, let, let's get another one over here. I tried it on earlier, so let's see. Oh. Okay. You guys are looking pretty cool, I think. You should you should try to put that mask on. Would you be able to put that on there? In the Friday zone, Friday. Jude is here to show us a crazy trick. What you'll need is a resealable plastic bag, water, and five sharpened pencils. First, you'll fill the bag half full with water. Then seal the bag closed. Next, it gets tricky. Push the pencil through one side of the bag so that it comes halfway out the other side. Look at that, it didn't smell a drop. The bag magically seals itself around the pencil. Pretty cool, huh? Now try the rest of your pencils. See how many you can fit in. Awesome, thanks Jude. Friday's own Welcome to the Earth Eats Test Kitchen. My name is Heather and I'm here with Felix and we are going to make some tasty toasties. <gasps> Heather, that sounds good. It's... What are tasty toasties? Well, let me show you. Okay. We're going to use rice cakes, <sighs> cheddar cheese, some softened cream cheese, Ooh. and some apple slices. <gasps> it's yeah, really good. Yeah. It's really good. That sounds delicious. You'll how, like it. How do we start? How do we start? Well, I'm going to get a little bit of cream cheese and put it in this bowl. Okay. It's nice and soft, so it's yeah. easy to add things to okay. and smooth onto our rice cakes. Yeah. Okay. What uh, uh, what is a rice cake? A rice cake? Look at this. <gasps> it, oh. Does it kind of remind you of popcorn? Yeah. And they come in different flavors. They're yeah. really good for you, really low in calories What and kind fat. of flavor is this one? This is just a plain one. It probably is a little bit caramel flavored, oh, so it's perfect okay. with our apples. Yeah, yeah, And it yeah. smells really good, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caramel apples reminds me of the fall. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, then yeah. you're in for a treat because you'll really like this. Oh, good, 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 good. So to this little bowl of cream cheese, I'm going to add just a little bit of cinnamon okay. because apples and cinnamon go together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And some honey. <gasps> oh, oh, and we know where the honey comes from. Yes. Yeah, the bees. The yeah, bees. Yeah. And there's a really nice local honey farm where you can go anytime and oh. visit and watch the bees in action. Where's that? Uh, there's one not far from here right now. That's oh. where I get my honey. Cool. So you smooth this together and blend yeah. it. Okay. Looks kind of goopy, but it's very tasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like that, okay. very easy. Okay. You could do it. Oh, Anyone yeah. could do it. Yeah, you could do it. <laughs> now I'm going to spread some of this on the rice cake. Okay. 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 Very easy. All right. Don't don't break it. Don't oh, break I won't the break cake. it. Okay. Okay. Just like that. Oh yeah, very gentle. Very gently. Yeah. And use about a tablespoon. Okay. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that looks good, Heather. It is good. Yeah. Now, I am going to chop you up a few really thin slices of apple. Oh, thank you. Okay, okay. Not big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thin. Little. We know. Little. Felix likes little pieces. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are perfect, Heather. You're good. Thank you, yeah. Felix. Yeah. Just like that. Okay, okay. And now, for something different, you probably uh -huh. weren't expecting, <gasps> I'm going to put a little bit of cheddar cheese on top. <gasps> Cheese. Cheese. Cheddar cheese. Because ah. cheddar cheese is really good with apples. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little on the top. I wouldn't have thought to put cheese on my apples. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. See, you're trying something new. Yeah. We, we always try something new, huh, Heather? Yes, we yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. Carrots on our pizza, that yeah. was something new. Yo, that was good, yeah. Raspberries. Remember, remember when we hid the broccoli? Yes. Yeah. That was good. 
And that's all we do. <gasps> and I'm going to pop this in the toaster oven for just about a minute to a minute and a half. Okay. Just until the cheese is melted. Okay. Well, Felix, I yeah. think time is up, and I think it's ready to take them out. Oh, it's been two minutes? It has been okay. two minutes. Are you hungry? Oh, are you I ready? I am starving. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, these are going to be some tasty toasties. Yeah. You're really going to like the cheese with the oh, apples. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we put honey, too, didn't we? We did, and yeah. cinnamon and oh, cream yeah. cheese. Oh. Look at that. Wow. So nice. Okay. Careful. Ooh. I don't want you to get burned. Smells so good. Yeah. Kind oh, of like smells... a cheesy apple pie. Yeah. Ooh. Very sweet. You yeah. want to try some? I think it's yeah. ready. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah. Just a little bit. Just, just a little bit. Oh, just okay. a little taste. Okay. What do you think? <gasps> Edna, that is so tasty. I'm so glad you like it. It was really easy. <laughs> hey, everyone. Here's that recipe again. You can write it down. Oh. Or go to our website and watch Earth Eat right on your computer. Yeah, eating smart is more than easy. It's super simple. Hi, it's me, Bob. Guess what? I'm the best pet on the planet. Watch for me every week. On the Friday Zone. Suspenders? Well, I don't know, son. Why do firemen wear red suspenders? To keep their pants up, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thanks again for joining us, you guys. It was so much fun. We got to try and gear. We learned all about fire. And I think everyone should go home and check their smoke detector batteries, because I'm going to do that. Thanks for joining us here on the Friday Zone. If you've got an idea for the show, visit our website at fridayzone.org. You can also watch videos, play games, and see behind the scenes photos. Remember to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone way. We'll see you here next week. Luke, I think you should. Oh, both oh, of you can stand up. <laughs>